Hello and welcome to today's video where I'll be covering my webcomic process in Clip Studio Paint. In today's video, I'll be going over a few final tips for how you can use Clip Studio Paint to convert your traditional layout comic into a vertical comic, or work in both formats simultaneously. Links to additional tutorials, as well as everything mentioned in today's video, will be down in the description below. Let's start off by going over some things to consider while drawing your comic. If you're drawing your line art in Clip Studio Paint, I recommend you draw your line art on a vector layer. This can be hugely helpful in preventing quality loss during panel resizing. As you can see, if I just resize a regular raster layer and make it bigger, the quality will drop significantly. But with vectorized line art, it can be scaled up and down to any size without a loss of quality. Just make sure the Change Vector Width box is checked while using the Transform tool on your vector layer, as this will allow the lines to scale up and down in thickness without the quality being affected. If you leave the box unchecked instead, the lines will stay at one thickness regardless of scale. This can also be useful if you're aiming to maintain a specific size of line thickness across all your panels. If you're working from traditional line art, your best options would be to either make sure your scans are as high res as possible to ensure no quality loss when adjusting, or you can try converting your line art scan into a vector layer. To do this, you'll want to adjust the black and white balance of your line art for the best contrast as possible. Then go to Edit, Convert Brightness to Opacity. This will remove the white background and leave just the line art. Then, right-click the layer and go to Convert Layer and choose Vector. You can adjust the settings of your vector layer as you see fit. Note that this method will change the appearance of your line art somewhat, but it will allow you to upscale and downscale the work without any quality loss. One struggle you may encounter while resizing multiple layers at a time is accidentally creating transparent gaps in your color fills. This is usually caused by anti-aliasing and is most noticeable when using brushes that have a soft outer edge. If you find that your work gets some transparent gaps when resizing, you may find it helpful to set your line art layer as the reference layer before applying your color. By filling from a reference layer, you can make sure the fill goes beyond just the innermost edge of your line art meaning you'll be less likely to encounter transparent gaps in colors while resizing. To adjust the fill threshold, go to the Subtool Detail panel with your preferred coloring tool. In this case, I'm using a Fill Lasso tool, but this also works with the Fill Bucket tool and the Paint Unfilled Area Selection brush. Select the Refer Multiple box under the Reference menu, making sure that the Reference Layer option is selected, then adjust the Close Gap, tolerance, and area scaling sliders until you achieve a result you like. Or, you can check the Fill Up to Vector Path box to automatically guarantee your fills won't leave transparent gaps behind. When making adjustments to your panels, be sure to lock any layers you don't want getting manipulated. If you'd like to make changes to your panel's dimensions, but don't want the art inside those panels getting moved around or resized, locking the layers inside will prevent that from happening. I find this useful for playing around with the dimensions of my panels between formats. As you can see here, by locking the layer my drawing is on, I could freely move around the panel shape and background color as much as I want while the drawing itself stays put. Finally, I highly recommend creating separate text tool presets for each comic format you use. Depending on the size you choose to work at, your font size may vary greatly between the different comic formats. As I mentioned in my previous video, vertical comics tend to favor larger text since they're designed for smaller screens, whereas traditional comics can utilize smaller text and still be legible. All that to say, if you're working between both formats, you won't be able to easily copy and paste your text over without having to resize it each time. To make this effort easier, I recommend making one preset for each format. So after copying and pasting the text over onto the other version, all you'll have to do is select the text 
then click on your other preset to switch it over to the correct size and formatting instantly. Those are the basics for how I convert traditional comics to vertical, and some tricks you can use to maintain a workflow in both formats without any hassle. Check the description below for my social media links and more tutorials. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Clip Studio Paint